tea became popular in Russia in the first half of the 17th century. Since then, Russians have been proud of their own tea culture. You may visit guests and do something wrong, and they may understand you in the wrong way. Marfa Petrovna, what can you do wrong in this situation? For example, why have you knocked on the cup? By chance. Nothing happens by chance. Merchants never did it by chance, only to let their servants know they needed more hot water. And if the sound was produced by a teapot lid, so it meant the water had to be poured into the teapot. When guests visited merchants, the first thing they were offered was tea. This tradition has remained in Russia ever since. Merchants used to say, we've been waiting for you, so has the tea. Merchants used to drink tea with sugar, sweets, and bagels, and there used to be a tradition on how to host the guests properly. No, thank you, Marfa Petrovna. I have just arrived from home. Sugar? No, thank you. I have just come from home. John? I'm fine, thanks, Marfa Petrovna. Arena Michalovna, please do me a favor. Only for you and just one piece. Two teapots was a must. One with some hot water and another one with tea leaves. Sometimes there was the third teapot for the second brew. At first, some hot water is poured into the teapot with leaves. After 10 minutes, they poured it in a cup till it is one-thirds full. Two-thirds of pure hot water is then added to it. A cup was always to be filled up. This was done to prevent guests from putting sugar into the cup so that they would only enjoy looking at it. Richer merchants could afford sipping tea through cubes of sugar. Even a table was an important participant of the tea ceremony and had to be set properly. A spoon had to be put onto a saucer only. If the spoon somehow touched the table, merchants believed it could attract evil spirits into their house. Nobility in Russia used to drink tea as the English from cups while merchants preferred taking tea from a saucer. There were rules on how to hold a saucer in an elegant manner. The key was holding one's little finger as far as possible from a cup or saucer. Yet this manner was later derided by modern books of etiquette. Merchants used to drink tea, as they called it, until keys. Due to the great amount of tea drunk, their keys kept at the belt reached the horizontal position. And merchants' wives used to drink tea, as they called it, until seven kerchiefs. Ladies sweated because of the hot tea and had to change their wet kerchiefs one on shoulders. Merchants always kept their samovar warm. They used to be a special one for the guests and another one for daily use. Samovar even produced some noise, a song, as they called it. Nobles and merchants could spend hours drinking tea. Herbal tea has always been a favorite. Since the old times, locals have been gathering herbs in the fields. Melissa, thyme, majorum are popular in modern Russia even today. In the 17th century, they served a simple herbal tea and a compound one containing different herbs, honey, milk or spices and they decorated the table with harabels.
These flowers have symbolized a kind of mascot. They were believed to protect home from evil spirits and improve one's mood. It was an art to dry a harebell and preserve its shape. If they added leaves of linden, such tea was taken from all the diseases. Some even believe that it could awake love in those drinking it. When he was unable to drink tea any longer, he simply turned his cup upside down and put a cube of sugar on it. At first, tea in Russia was popular as a medical drink and later it was drunk for pleasure. Almost all the tea brought from China was immediately taken to Moscow. It was expensive but very popular. And in a small Russian town like Kolomna, one can always find old Russian herbal tea to drink. 